Great minds think alike. Great minds think for themselves. Spock, who is this man? Sequoia, sir. A Cherokee. An early 19th century Cherokee, to be precise. You cold-hearted Vulcan! Sequoia is the only person in history to single-handedly invent a written language. Easy, Bones. Jim, I'm a doctor, not a linguist. Growing up in Georgia, Sequoia worked as a farmer, trader, and silversmith before finding his true calling. These silver spurs are a pain in my hindquarters. I want my money back. Got a receipt? How can you give me a receipt when the Cherokee don't even have a written language? Good point. Sequoia was a man with a mission. Written words are crucial to recording a people's history, and they're simply delicious bon appetit. Sequoia ate, slept, and drank his mission to create a written language for his people. This is where Sequoia works. He's been at it for years. The term foolish dreamer has been bandied about. At one point, his wife thought he might be some kind of witch. So she torched the shed. He lost ten years' worth of work, but it didn't stop him, and his determination paid off. Sequoia's alphabet of 86 symbols was an amazing breakthrough. There was even a time in the 19th century when the Cherokees had the highest literacy rate in the world. How does one acknowledge such a towering achievement by such a towering intellect? You name a towering redwood after him. Wow. Yep. The Sequoias were named after Sequoia, a guy who knew that great minds think for themselves. Visit your local library and the Library of Congress website, www.loc.gov. Great minds think alike. Yo, yo, yo! Great minds think for themselves. Hey, y'all, welcome to New Orleans, the big easy. Where the nights are hot and the music is cool. <laughs> the music is jazz. <laughs> this is where I was born. Mm -hmm. The great Satchmo. Louis Armstrong was born here too. Coincidence? I think not. Attention, ships at sea and everyone else listening. It's 1925 and Louis is about to turn the music world upside down. Whoa, am I getting a little vertigo? Possibly. In the early days of jazz, a group all played the melody together. But you see, Louis had a different idea. Louis Armstrong practically invented the art of soloing. That's where you play on your own what you feel. A whole new musical language was born. Is Improvisation. That's not what we practice. It's syncopation. I think he's making it up as he goes along. It's jubilation. Blow, Pops, blow. Oh, it's jazz. For the scat impaired, that was a riff. Louis, what is jazz? Man, if you gotta ask, you'll never know. You dig ya. Great minds. Think for themselves. Oh, yeah, baby. Visit your local library and the Library of Congress website, www.loc.gov. Great minds think alike. No! Great minds think for themselves. Freedom! I don't take my freedom for granted. You shouldn't either. Luckily, there were people like Sojourner Truth. In 1797, Sojourner Truth was born into slavery. She was named Isabella then. By the time she was 13, she was six feet tall. But her spirit had just begun to grow. When her son was sold to be a lifelong slave, she did something incredible. We're outside the courtroom right now. Oh, wait a minute. Hold it. Slave sues master and wins. Extra, extra. New York State abolishes slavery. Master is forced to work. Look like I have to pick cotton myself. Let's just invent Dacron and make colors that are totally outrageous and go out on the golf green. To celebrate her freedom, she took a new name, Sojourner Truth. Sojourner means to travel. Truth, as in the truth shall set you free. She walked the nation, preaching to anyone who would listen. You want equal rights for women too now, do you? Why, every right-thinking man knows that a female is weaker by nature, don't you know? Sojourner replied, look at me, look at my arm. I have plowed and planted and gathered into bonds, and no man could head me, and aren't I a woman? All right. When Sojourner Truth spoke for freedom, equality, and justice, people listened. The truth was, and is, great minds think for themselves. Visit your local library and the Library of Congress website, www.loc.gov. Great minds think alike. Wrong, very wrong. Great minds think for themselves. For over a century after we adopted our Constitution, 
women had to keep their thoughts to themselves. Nice try, lady, but this is 1904 and voting is a guy thing. No chicks. No babes. No women. Not anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready right now for Susan B. Anthony and the Suffragettes. Born the second of eight children, Susan was raised a Quaker. She believed that men and women were created equal, but not everybody was ready to hear. No, no. Who in a marriage owns all the property? Men has a right to divorce. Men guaranteed child custody. Men. That's right on all three counts. You've won everything you've ever wanted, but uh, it all goes to your husband. Because you have no actual property. Let's show her what she's won. <laughs> a hot stove and a large family. Good luck and child rearing. Susan B. Anthony said, hmm? Mm, it's going to be a woman's world, too. And to make her point clear, she even got herself arrested trying to vote in a presidential election. We know you're in there, come out with your hands up and drop the ballot, please. She made a statement that rallied women all across America. It took the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, but Susan B. Anthony marched to victory. Of course, today, not only can a woman vote in an election, she can even win one. But it's only possible because Susan B. Anthony knew. Great minds think for themselves. Isn't that right, boys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Visit your local library and the Library of Congress website, www.loc.gov.